Hey everyone, Glitcher, and welcome back to Act 5. Today we're going to be 3D printing our drone frame, assembling it, and soldering all the parts together. Printing the frame is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm using PETG filament. The, my particular filament, Paramount 3D, prints at about 250 degrees Celsius with a heated bed temperature of 50 C. I did make sure this frame was small enough to print on the Monoprice Select Mini, which is a 120 by 120 millimeter printer. Really common, I've recommended it before. If you're just looking to get started, great printer. Assembling the frame is almost as straightforward as actually 3D printing it. You just need to screw the motors into where they go, the camera to where it goes, the flight controller to where it goes, and zip tie the antennas on. That's the great thing about modern drone design is the components have gotten so integrated and so simple that everything just kind of goes together real quick. The bulk of this video is going to be talking about the electronics. The only real things to watch out for during the hardware assembly is as I said in the previous video, you wanna make sure that your screws aren't so long that they're going to over penetrate into the motor windings and short them out and cause damage. And you also wanna make sure that you install the camera before the motors, as you probably saw in the time lapse, I had to pull the motors back off to install the camera as the screw holes for the camera are blocked by the motors. I could have used an Allen key, but it was just quicker to remove the motors. Now we haven't installed the video transmitter or the RC receiver yet, as we are gonna need to solder some wires to those and modify the mounting holes a little bit. First things first, we are obviously going to need to shorten our motor wires as they came to be excessively long. So we want to figure out where the motor wires are going to go and cut them about a centimeter longer than that because we're gonna want some extra room to not strain the wires and to also in the future, if we ever have anything happen, we want to have enough length to cut and resolder the wire. So here I am going to just make sure these are nice and straight. These snips have seen better days and are kind of chipped, so this is going to be a little tedious. Now save all these offcuts. This is really high quality silicon wire, and we can probably get away without using any of this by just reusing this for the rest of our build. Now this particular camera comes with a connector on both ends. We are not going to be using the connector on this end as it'll be directly soldered to the flight controller or video transmitter depending on how you wire it up. This camera has a built-in OSD interface so that you can wire the camera directly to the transmitter and then it will overlay the OSD inside the camera with an extra wire going from the flight controller to the camera. I don't know that we're going to cover the OSD in this series as that's a bit more advanced. However, that is definitely an option. Okay, now that we have all of our wires stripped, we are going to do the process called tinning. And this is where we take our soldering iron and we go through and we add a little bit of solder to each one of these wires as well as to our motor pads. And this allows us to get a really solid, consistent connection. One thing to be wary of is the pads on this flight controller for the motors are way smaller than I am used to. And I believe that is because they were intended to have a connector on them so that you could use them with a tiny whoop or other smaller drone that you would just plug pre-soldered or pre-connected motors into. We're not doing that, of course, so we're going to be soldering to these rather tiny pads. So watch out for any short circuits or solder bridges and make sure that your the end of your wire isn't touching any other components. Like right here, if we were to solder the wire here, that would be close to this little crystal and we want to make sure that we aren't shorting out any components on the board. Now I'm using a TS-80 soldering iron that is powered by USB-C. Uh, I really like how quickly it heats up and how small and practical it is. I also have a much smaller tip for it that we're going to be using. It's a needle tip and this should make our life a lot simpler. Now as for soldering the motor wires to the flight controller, there is a correct order. However, it's pretty much impossible to discern what that order should be until you actually fire up the motors and see which direction they're spinning. So for now, just solder the motor wires in whichever order you want. And later, if one motor is spinning the wrong direction, all you have to do is flip any two motor wires for that motor and it will reverse direction. You probably won't be able to see much of this part because the overhead camera rig I'm using does not have good zoom. I'm going to fix that for future videos, but this is what we have to work with. However, this should be all pretty self-explanatory. And the flight controller came with a guide for the pinout. Another thing you want to watch out for is any frayed motor wires that didn't get properly soldered. 
A single strand is all it takes to cause catastrophic damage. So make sure to inspect your solder joints very closely for any frayed or loose wires. Now one trick I'm going to use is some electrical tape on these rear arms. The front arms have cable management guides, however I didn't add any for the rear arms. So I'm just going to take some electrical tape and wrap it around the motor arm to keep the wire nice and flat so that it can't ever bunch up and go into the prop or anything like that. Plus it'll make it look a little cleaner. Next up we're going to do the video wires. So this flight controller has two sets of pads for related to video stuff. As the pad names imply, the 5 volts, the red wire goes to 5 volts, black goes to ground, and yellow goes to cam. Now you can see right here, this is wrong. This should all be twisted or else you'll get a lot of interference in your video feed from the motor wires and other noise generating components. So we're going to undo that real quick and make sure these are all twisted together. Now you want to make sure these wires are twisted as you got them as this will help cancel out a lot of interference from the motors and other parts that are generating interference on the drone. Now another way to have done this is to wire the camera directly to the video transmitter and then to take whatever the OSD feed is and wire it directly into this camera. Now, if your camera doesn't have this option, this is the way to do this. And this also gives you a little more control over OSD elements and other functions later. So I'm going to do it the proper way. But if your flight controller doesn't have a facility for the camera and the video transmitter and only has like a video out pad or something like that, then you'll want to do it, uh, wire the camera directly to the transmitter. Now this particular flight controller and VTX combo has a function that lets you configure the VTX from the drone, whether over serial or using your sticks and the OSD. So while you're gonna have your ground, five volts, and video wire, you're also going to have a fourth wire that you can choose to omit if you don't want to do this. But this will give you a active connection from the flight controller to the video transmitter so that you can change your powers, what channel you're on and so on, without having to reach in and press the function button. I find this very useful in all the drones I've used it on, so I'm going to make sure that is all wired up here. And you wanna make these wires as short as possible, as the longer they are, the more prone they are to interference and so on. So I'm gonna cut these right about here, solder them, and then fold everything over. And then we can fold that over and mount it like this. Though I currently don't have the standoffs, so we're not gonna bother with that. One funny thing I also wanted to note is I realized while I picked out the antenna for this, I didn't design in a 3D printed mount for it. So I'm probably just going to zip tie it to the frame like this for now. However, that's one of the great things about 3D printed drones is we can very easily go back and change our design, reprint the frame whenever we break an arm or whatever. And now we have more antenna mounting options. So 3D printing is great because when you realize you make a little mistake like that, all you got to do is print another frame. Next up is our receiver. Like I said, I'm using a Crossfire receiver, and this is almost certainly going to differ from what you're using. And I'm going to be running this in what's called S-Bus mode. It's a fairly standard RC transmitter mode, which means I only need ground, power, and the S-Bus signal. This doesn't get me bidirectional telemetry, but again, that's out of the scope of this video. That gets into more advanced options that we can play with later. So I'm going to tin the ground pad, five volt pad, and the channel one pad, which also doubles as the S pad. We can just tuck the receiver down in here and I'll add a little bit of double-sided tape to it later. And then the antenna can just be tucked under here where we'll add a couple of zip ties. Now I probably should have ran a hole for through the drone frame for the antenna to feed up to, but I think I'll just use my battery clip holder. And there we have it. All I need to do now is mount the video transmitter and give ourselves an XT30 or whatever connector batteries you are using right to these pads here. And in theory, we have a fully functional drone. Now, unfortunately, I apparently never ordered the 2S batteries or the 2S battery connector for this drone. 
despite having linked them in multiple of the previous videos. I'm not really sure how that happened, but they aren't here. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to fire it up in this video, but in the next video, we're going to do our electronics test, and we're going to configure Betaflight and actually take it for a test flight in the finale. So stay tuned for that. Uh, like I said, all the relevant links to all the parts, including the ones that I, go ne I need to go order myself, are linked down below, as well as links to the previous videos and some of the other content referenced in this video. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.